Princess Nandi, thank you so much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we go into leadership, can you tell us a little bit about your own journey? Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Nongoma. In fact, I was born in a clinic. Um, the hospital was too far from my mother. So she drove herself to the clinic because obviously the hospital was too far. And um, those days we didn't have much tar road. And um, so she drove herself on the gravel road. And obviously my father was busy with other national, uh, well, nation building work. So there was nobody to take her because the baby was about to pop out. So I was born in Usutu Clinic in Nongoma in 1977, May 30. So, um, yeah, and then I, I grew up uh, at the palace. Uh, and then when I was four years old, I had to go and live with my aunt in Swaziland because she was getting married to one of the princes. So traditionally, when a woman gets married, she takes... Uh, you call it umakochana, which is like a, a small bride, you know, somebody who's going to fetch water for you, somebody you're going to uh, send to do, like, you know, small chores. So I grew up there. Um, there I learned, uh, well, because it was a different setup, um, as young as I was, I learned to be very independent and to live with people that I did not know. Uh, they spoke Siswati, and um, but it was it was it was it was a good setup, uh, different, and basically I had no choice but I had to live there, and I still don't understand why my parents took me there at that age, but um, it, it was an experience. Uh, I missed home so much. Every holiday I would go home back in Nongoma, and you know, as young as I was, I knew that I had to go back, and my parents used to give me a packet of sweets that were called eclairs i'm sure you <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you know those and um you know i would hold on to that packet until i crossed the border and i would start counting about like you know who i'm going to give uh where i was i was literally studying uh then it was um a crutch called uh, national baptist crutch in swaziland and um yeah i learned to give and share uh, during those years, which is something I still do now. So I think it's something that I learned when I was young. So I, um, yeah, I would share that packet of sweets with kids in the, in the crèche and they would litter the whole school. And unfortunately, I would have to pick up all the, the papers because they would just eat and throw, you know. So Can you yeah. tell us, as you grew up, what was your dream career? Well, you know, funny enough, um, I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> I wanted to be a teacher up until like high school. I, yeah, I still wanted to be a teacher. But then after attending different schools, different boarding schools, um, I got to this private school in, in Peter Meisberg at St. Anne's, which is at Hilton. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a private school. Um, I looked and I said, oh my goodness, you know, my, my parents would, would have a fit if I decide to be a teacher after they send me to a private school. You know, as, at that time, um, as a black person, you, you either a nurse or a teacher or a policeman or a social worker or a clerk. So I decided, you know what, I want to take something totally different. <laughs> so I applied at um, the Technicon in Cape Town. And then I applied at the Technicon in Pretoria, uh, which is now Tswane University of Technology. And then uh, Cape Town was too far. Um, and then I went to Tswane University and I studied business communication, which is a communications course, public relations, media. And um, yeah, so that's how I literally studied that i i, I right. changed my 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 my, my path and yeah. um can you tell us what were your sources of inspiration 
as you grew up? You know, one thing I remember, I I used to love this cartoon called Heidi. Heidi was this um, often from the Swiss mountains, um, and she lived with with her grandfather and I just used to love that cartoon character because she used to love people. She was so caring. You know, she was very inquisitive and I think I resonate a lot with her and um that's I would say that's a that's the character that really <laughs> inspired me to be even as I am right now. You know, she she was curious, she was loving, she was you know, she cared for people and um, very inquisitive as well. So, and what would you say was a turning point in your life? Well, there are a couple, but uh, when I went to Swaziland um, at that age, for me, uh, I learned a lot. Um, and also when I went to another boarding school, which was a Roman Catholic school in Dwe Dwe, um, which is uh, in, the, in the middle of um in Lambert district um it was like in the in the sugar canes you know it was like far so there i i experienced a lot of bullying <laughs> um you know from 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 other kids because i think of my background they wanted to see how i'd react knowing that i come from from a real family and yet i was a very normal child but there I learned to make friends with with people who were, you know, who were, who were like really, really kind to me. And I still have, we're still friends up until today. So for me, I realized that there's, um, there are people who look at you and they assume things about you without even taking time to know anything about you. So for me, I, I see a lot of kids being uh, bullied it's, it's not a good experience, believe me, because someone can shun you down. Like, you know, they they can just take your, your spirits to another level. Mm. So for me, that was a turning point. And I realized that, you know what, it's not a good thing. I will be kind, even if people were, were, were nasty to me. But um, some of them, funny enough, became very good friends because I would always fight for them because a bully, I always say, is always a coward. Mm. You know, it's someone who always has personal issues, you know. Um, yeah, so for me, that was... And I believe you kept your early friends for a long time, oh, ever yeah. since. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had my friends for like 36 years. <laughs> Jeez, that makes me so old. Yeah, for 36 years, I've, I've, I've had the same friends. And um, I think it's good to, you know, to, to, to keep those people because they know you. They, they know you. They, they actually remind me of how I was as a child, you know. Mm. And it's, it's a very good thing to, to have, it, you know, when you have those people who are constantly going to remind you, no, you were good at this. Because sometimes, funny enough, you, you, you know, you, you do forget. You just get off the, <laughs> the trail and, mm. and, and someone needs to remind you, no, 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 you're strong, you, you're good at this. You know, um, so it's, 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 it's important. So I've had the same friends. Yes, I do have acquaintances, but I've, I've, I've got those people who are really, who, who are really um, unconditionally supportive of me. And um, they're very honest, which is what I like. They're very honest. And yes, as much as I come from that background, but, but they're very honest in telling me, no, this does not look good. Why don't you do this like this you know so they 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 guide me you know they they guide me because yeah i've had them for a long time and what would you say is driving princess nandi today oh a lot of things drive me um some good some not uh well i'll start with the, the things that are i see every day i mean the plight of the people i mean we've got a high rate of unemployment so Funny enough, that drives me to do things better. Um, I mean, I cannot change the whole world, but I, 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 I feel that our negative um, issues can drive us to the positives. You know, um, we can create so much uh, based on what 
we know like for instance you know I'm, I'm trying to use my brand to to you know create to make a difference um, and to bring hope to the people and now get into business as well just using my brand and um, also my family drives me you know um, I think you know some people always wish oh I wasn't born in this family for me as tough as it is I know people think oh it's so nice and rosy to be from the royal family but it's actually quite tough because you've got to prove yourself twice as hard than like a normal um, kid um, because people have a different picture so it it, it it drives me to work even harder uh, for the kingdom, for the people um, around the world, and also just to promote um, the the family brand, the Zulu brand. Um, that's what drives me. That 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 for me, I feel needs to be out there. I know we don't do much uh, about it, but everywhere I go internationally, I'm always talking about. Uh, my our people i'm gonna say our people <laughs> you know and also um just how 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 they are as 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 i mean they they they're living in poverty but they're very humble people they just need just those resources to make life easier so a lot of things um are driving you a lot of things drive me and I also get driven by uh, people, um, people that I meet. I always find something interesting. I always try and find something interesting, especially people who are much older. Like, for instance, Jack Nicklaus um, really inspires me. You know, he, he inspires me to, to teach kids how to play golf. You know, when I met him, um, you know, he asked me if I play golf. I said, no, I've never even lifted. I even called it a stick. <laughs> a club um, and he said you know I want you to go back home and really teach kids about golf because well you first start playing um, but then you must teach kids about golf because it's it's a game of discipline mm -hmm. it's a game of cleanliness you know he really spoke about all these things and I, I literally did that and I started doing a lot of clinics for for for, for primary school kids even though it's an expensive game, but um, I'm trying to also collect clubs, you know, so that they can play. Um, because not all of us are going to achieve academically. You never know. Maybe mm. there'll be one of the Tiger Woods there, um, you know, because people have different um, skills. Also, um, yeah. Well, I'm also inspired by <laughs> flying. <laughs> Lying. Um, I know as you know I said to myself when I get to 40 I want to start doing certain things like for mm -hmm. instance I've I've, I've uh, registered at this um, aviation school in Margate I know Margate is far but it's easier for me it's 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 owned by a black guy so I want to also support him uh, you know not a lot of black guys own uh, flying schools mm -hmm. and it's called zero zero three <laughs> Um, down in 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 in, in, Margate. in Margate in the south coast, um, I've just given myself just three years to do it because of other things that I want to do. So right now I'm doing the theory. Um, and I believe you have an interesting leadership perspective about what golf and flying can teach kids. Yes, you know, for me, as as I've explained, golf it's 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 a mind game where you can, you know learn to, to be disciplined you know when you when you when you set up a shot you know it determines where it's gonna go never mind the wind but at least you have an idea of where it's gonna go based on what on how you set up your shot um, and also it's a game of giving other people a chance respecting people being disciplined and you know uh, just the whole cleanliness I, I think I love the whole cleanliness um, around it because these kids when they when they get into the golf course you know i tell them you do not litter here can you see how clean how spotless it is and you do not litter you need to look after the grass so for me it's about connecting with the nature as well 
you know and flying you know when you fly it's like it's just you up there and obviously and the other passengers but you for me i get to think differently when i'm mm. flying it's like my mind just you know just goes into an, to another level i get to look at things from the from an aerial view if i get a chance to sit next to the window and i just it's just amazing so for me i'm i'm i'm, I'm inspired by by those things by the nature and you know when you're up there you've got no cell phone mm. uh well you can chat to the next person and just find out how they are it's like literally from here to johannesburg from durban to johannesburg you've got an almost an hour and you can literally just chat about anything and everything with the person next to you uh, somebody who's a stranger possibly and um and you know things things can get started uh, just from that conversation yeah from up there so princess let's talk about leadership what does the future of leadership mean to you you know um i think leaders leaders need to be people who are caring people who are prepared to have um to do mentorship for 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 the younger ones and also yes within the company but also go out into the communities especially leaders who are from the rural areas they really need to start going back into their communities and just getting involved in maybe their old schools and that they that they attended even just giving kids um talks i know a lot of people do that but i think um we can do more we can do so much more you know start smaller projects um and really show care for the communities because at the end of the day we go back there whether we die or whatever i know a lot of people get buried in the cities but you know where your belly is you know mm. so i think leaders need to really have the care the kindness the trustworthiness and really to be good examples because young people look up to to them um so it's it's very important it's it's very important and it's it, it is so sad to see leaders doing things that are shocking you know um th- that that are just going to leave people embarrassed you know or disappointed like oh my gosh i know people make mistakes but i think when the leader when you're in the leadership position you should really try by all means to live an exemplary life you know uh, we need to be exemplary and we need to to really basically we need to be caring i mean mm. to be caring means a lot of things to be loving means a lot of things maybe loving because love has got a lot of um facets it's it's kind it's it's non-judgmental it's mm. it's honest it's trustworthy which is something very hard to do but it it it's all about trying to do those things um and just going into those communities really and going into those communities And princess what have you learned from your own journey that you consider most important for building future leaders You know for me um I feel that anything that has happened to me had to happen and I've had to embrace it uh even if it was a like maybe some painful experience but it was part of the journey because at the end of the day when you get to your destination you have got to sit down and say wow this is what i've done this is what i went through and you need to tell people your story cannot just be you know just chop chop like mm. plain sailing it's got to have it's got to have all kinds of frills it's got to have the pain the disappointment the embarrassments the the struggle the struggle um the beauty the 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 courage you know the the heroism so it's got to have a lot of things it's like a meal mm. you know it's, it's a meal that you enjoy with all the salads and the veggies and the starch and, and so it's it's got to have a bit of everything it cannot just be like oh i'm the king's daughter i've had it all no 
Mm. I have not had it all. I've, I've had my fair share in life. But you know what? It has made me a strong woman that I am today. Whether it's through relationships that have failed or business deals that have failed or being judged, um, you know, or being bullied. So it's, it's a mix of everything. It's a mix of everything. Or even financial issues because people mm. think, oh, you know, you're a princess. You've got everything on a silver, on a platinum tray. No, I've had to work hard. I've had to, I pay for my own bills. If I don't have any money, I have to work twice as hard, you know. And um, nothing comes from my dad, as people think. Um, it it's and my dad is very strict um, but you know he knows that I work hard he knows that I work very hard so the whole journey has been um, a, a good experience um, the hills the thorns the plain sailing you know a bit of everything it's it's been part of my journey and I couldn't have it better you know it's it's it's, it's, it's part of my empowerment, it's part of my growth, and it's part of my story that I tell every day to people and hopefully I'll tell it to the world one day. Now, Princess, you have been mentoring many youngsters for many years. Can you maybe share a success story with us where you mentored somebody and that person really took your advice to heart and has achieved significant success? You know, um, it's not really young people, but sometimes it's older people. It's, it's strange that even older people listen to me because I think I've got that, that character of really convincing people. Um, I remember, well, I, I will talk about this lady. Never mind the, the, the younger ones because mm. for me, a young person, you tell them to abstain, you know, because there's a lot of issues around um uh, you know peer pressure and school so i'm still mentoring some of the kids through that like get through your education don't run for brands you know just get to school finish and then you can buy your own thing when you when you when you're older so that's what i'm constantly doing um but um there's one lady um that i worked with in another organization in in the north of Zuland. i mean it was tough for her at work because she did not have the education, but she had the skill to deal with the community and they wouldn't give her a raise, you know. Um, so when I, when I approached the, the, the manager to say, can you please give her a raise? And I justified um, why she needs a raise because the organization would not be where it was if it went for her mm. because she's got a skill that none of us have, you know, to go and sit with the community and convince them to take on a project. Uh, it's, it's really difficult. So I taught her um, to, to, to negotiate further, even when I left. I'm like, have they given you a raise? She's like, no. I said, well, you go and tell her, well, tell them ABC. I'm not going to say much, but, you know, you, you go and tell them um, ABC. And for me, she's done it over the years. And she's always, you know, get gotten what she wanted because um, I helped her with, you know, kind of like negotiating skills, even though I was just telling her that. But she, she's, she's, she's learned and, she, you know, she, she's always grateful that um, I taught her those negotiating negotiating skills um, and can you maybe tell us who are the role models of leadership that you would recommend future leaders should study and maybe learn from sure um, sure there are so many but um, oh, geez, that's a difficult one um, uh, Wow. Maybe closer to home. Who would you consider the oh, role models okay. to be in the country? Okay, in the country. Um, there are so many powerful people, women and, and, and men. But 
I feel for me that every role model should be the people in your community. Like for instance, I can I, I can never choose anybody but my mother. Mm. <laughs> you know, I think my mother, uh, being the second wife, um, with eight kids. Yes, my father was there, but he is the king, and she had to assume a role of, of of being a father as well while my father was mm. uh, busy running the nation which is even more difficult but I applaud her because she would say no your father wouldn't want this like okay no this we can override so she was very she was very smart in terms of doing all those things so she assumed a role of being both parents while her husband was there and for me, I looked at her and I said, wow, I mean, I don't know if I would be able to do that because I would probably wait for the, the husband to come home and say, okay, this is what happened. So certain things um, were urgent and she would override them, you know. And uh, in, in that type of setup, you, you know, you wouldn't dare <laughs> do certain things without the king. But... Looked at, looking at the fact that my parents, um, their best friends, I must say, you know, they, they, you know, they met when my mother was like 18 years old. So, um, I look, I look at, at them as, as, as a unit who are, who really understand each other. Even now they're best friends, you know? Um, so I would, I would, I would say my mother and my grandmother and my aunts and just, just my family, and yes, my father as well, you know. Uh, you know, as much as he's the king, but he's... He, I always want to see the other side of him. He's the father, um, but when he's the father, he is something completely different. He, he jokes around a lot. He plays the piano. He entertains us with the piano. He, he is just... You know, he's, 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 he's the father that I'll never take advantage of because I always know that he's the king and maybe there's somebody waiting for him. I cannot just barge in. I respect him. I also make an appointment if I want to discuss something related to business because I want him to take me seriously. Um, I don't just budge in and say, oh, I want this. No, I, I respect his space and that has taught me to also be like that towards other people. I do not just budge in just because I think, because I'm a princess, no. I ask, you know, you've got to be like a lady in everything that you do. You, you, you don't want to be like just bulldozing in, you know, in people's lives. You've, you've, you've mm. got to be, you've got to respect the space. That's, that's how I am. You know, I really respect somebody's space so much. I do because I, I do not know how they're going to react. And I do not want sour grapes at the end of the day. So, yeah, those are the people that really, really inspire me. My parents actually really inspire me. They Thank do. you. Mm. Thank you, Princess. Now, last but not least, when you speak to young leaders, what do you tell them? One bit of advice. What is it that you tell them they should really look for in their daily life, in their daily, condu in their daily conduct? You know, for me, learning learning is is such a beautiful thing and the beauty of not knowing is amazing because you've got a chance to learn do not be afraid to say you do not know anything because nobody was born knowing anything everybody is here because they've learned something even a child learns to crawl and fall and crawl until he realizes that you know what now i'm going to walk so life is like that you've got to give yourself an opportunity to to learn and you learn something new every day and also just to to love yourself I've, I've you know over the years it's it's been it's been a struggle to love myself because uh, of of the things that I've experienced as a youngster um so I tell them that you know what you must love yourself so that other people can also love you and you know for you to channel that love it's it's very important because people look at you differently um if you're a bully 
that's what you'll be known for. You must always try and be a good person. It is so, 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 so key. Um, um, it's, it's, you know, to be, to be a bully is not in fashion. To be a, what's the word? Like a Goliath, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not in. You've, you've got to have a beautiful heart. You've got to have a beautiful mm. heart. It's very important. You lose absolutely nothing. My mom always said, you lose nothing by being kind. Instead, you gain something, you know, even though you don't see it now. You know, if you help somebody now, 10 years later, they'll say, wow, you helped me 10 years ago. You know, I've, I've had a lot of those stories. And because you do it just effortlessly, you should do things effortlessly and um, don't take yourself too seriously as well. But look after yourself. It's very important. You know, when I said love, when you love yourself, there are certain things that you do not do as a youngster. Because you want to protect your, your heart, you want to protect your body. Mm. Um, and you must just learn. Just mm. it's, it's an opportunity to learn and to, to, to create um, big things in life. And you know, the type of kids that I, I speak to, they, they connect with me. You know, when they know that I'm at home, they'll come home and mm. we'll just sit and have some tea or do some rice, some meat or sweet potatoes, you know. And we just sit and chat and I ask them about their lives and, you know, they would tell me, oh, this and this is happening in the community or this one got pregnant now and this. And I'm like, okay, let's not talk about other people. What are you doing about yourselves? Mm. You know, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those things. And I, mostly I speak to these kids in church because I always believe that they need to be in a setup that is already organized but they're also out in the community. But mm. they need to be in a setup that is already organized like a church. So most of these talks I like these these youngsters I speak to, they are usually in church. But I know how they operate in the community mm. and all that, but at least they they know that, you know, they've got to do activities in church and also take those those activities into the community. So it's just all about uh, learning. Mm. Give yourself an opportunity to learn every day. When the sun rises, a lot of things happen. Opportunities come, challenges come, but you must learn from every day that happens. You know, and be thankful and be grateful for for life. So to learn and to love and to have a beautiful heart. And to have a beautiful heart. For me, you know, it's, literally you know to have a beautiful heart is it's like it's like an adrenaline you know it's like it, it it keeps you going it's it's not that you blow your own horn but it makes you feel good it's like wow let me do it again let me do it again it just builds it builds it's like you're building something really good and when you're doing bad you're also building something bad it's like you're building a a, a, a journey that is going down the drain but if you build something good even if things are tough but you're building something good and there's always a reward for that always 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 well thank you so much princess for sharing your journey thank for sharing you. your insights and you are an inspiration i know you've recently taken your message as far afield as singapore and hong kong and australia soon i believe oh, yes <laughs> and you are a blessing you thank are a blessing you. not just to the country but a blessing to the world thank you so i want thank to wish you. you all the best Thank you. And hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.